Hello guys, in the last uh, upgrade video of Damasi I said there was a few problems with the model so today I'm going to try and sort those out uh, and I also have another problem that I've noticed these wires that I've had plugged into the cab uh, they've been breaking, you can see this white wire here so they've been breaking from me just plugging in and out this little socket here so I'm going to come up with a hopefully a solution to that problem so that I won't have any more broken wires because it's hard to debug something when you know if that wire snaps then all of a sudden I have no communications I mightn't notice the wire for a while so so today I'm going to try and sort out the few problems that we have with the model well the first thing I'm going to look at is these wires to the cab now, in its current state when I plug them out plug them in and out there's the problem that they can um, well they can just snap off where they're soldered so what I'm thinking of doing is soldering these wires together so that instead of the cab being able to come off the cab will just click up and lean forward and I can program the Arduino that way so I'm gonna have to cut away these uh, so I'm gonna have to cut away these connections that I had and uh, replace them with some solder joints but obviously it's not just that straightforward the reason I had these connections here is because to program the Arduino in the top I had to disconnect it from the Arduino in the bottom and the easiest way I thought to do that was with just connections in and out but the stress on the wires seemed to be too much so what I'm going to do instead is put two 1k resistors on or between these two wires and these two wires and that way when I go to program it, even though they're still connected, the programmer will have priority because there's a 1k impedance going to the second Arduino. So when you go to program it, the 1k resistance will give whichever Arduino you've plugged into the priority. And if you go to the other Arduino, you'll have the same thing. But when there's no programmer, then the shortest path is going to be through the 1k resistor. So you'll still have your communications when the programmer isn't there. That's the plan anyway. I haven't tried it before, so I'll basically just be finding out if it's going to work then today. Well, there's the first two wires soldered and stuck in there. I have to move on to the other side now. Okay, well, it's wired up now. I put the resistors on the serial, uh, on the serial lines, the UART lines. So, if, uh, if it's working properly, we should be able to drive. Here we go, no problem. So that's hopefully the first of our problems sorted. Uh, I'll have to move on to the next one, probably do the lifting arms next. The problem with our lifting arms is that they just won't go low enough. As you can see there, that's the lowest, and it's pretty high, and it's obviously way too high to uh, pick up a bale. So what I think the problem might be is that the arms are not getting down to the lowest possible point because I fixed them in the up position so what I'm going to do is remove that uh, fixing that I did before and grind away the little catch that's on here to stop the arms moving up and down when they're a static model and then I'll see does that let our lifting arms down to pick up a bale or whatever it is we're trying to pick up Okay, well you can see here the little link that I put into the lifting arms to try and uh, keep them in the up position because I thought that would work out pretty well. But obviously it's not uh, going low enough, so I need to remove that and then grind away the little catch that's in there so that the lifting arms can fall down. Alright, well I got rid of the pins and I ground a good smooth edge on this so that now our lifting arms will just slide down. No problem. Now with our bail fork on, you can see we can now get down the full distance down to the ground. Should be able to pick up the bail. So that looks like that problem is fixed. So the next thing is, the big one, is put the lights in the bonnet, which uh, won't be an easy problem to fix. Well, it wasn't easy getting the bonnet off, I had to pretty much dismantle the whole model again. 
but I think it'll be worth it to get these lights in here. So what I'm going to first do is to go off this grill and then see what kind of space I have to work with behind that. I don't expect there to be a whole lot of space really, but we'll see what we have. Okay, well that wasn't too difficult. So next problem is to figure out how we're going to get the lights into it. Okay, well here's the grill piece that I took out of here. I drilled enough holes to put 8 LEDs in there, so you can see we have 8 LEDs, 2 on each corner basically. And I had to remove the pins that would normally go into these holes to fit in all the wires. And now this grill obviously won't fit back in here because of all the wires that are in the way. So I'm going to have to grind away all this, uh, these pieces up here that are going to be hidden. And I'll probably just glue this piece back in. But before I do that, I'm going to finish off the wiring. I might need to use a transistor on this. I'm not 100% sure how I'm going to do it yet. But we need to measure the current first. Okay, here's our multimeter set to milliamps. I have a 100 ohm resistor here. And I'm just going to see what that looks like. It's probably going to be way too small of a current. About 8 milliamps. 8 or 9 milliamps. So it's only around about 1 milliamp per LED. Well, I don't want to have to use a transistor, so I'm going to keep the I'm going to keep the current down fairly low. So to do that, I've chosen a 60 ohm resistor, and as you can see there, our lights are fairly bright. 12 milliamps for these lights shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't be too much of a draw on the on the battery. So that's uh, that's pretty good. The work lights are all fairly high powered lights anyway. So if you need a bit more light, you just switch on the work lights. Here's the 8 LEDs in place here. The resistor even holds the whole thing together, so I didn't even have to mount it in place then or glue it or anything. Hopefully that'll stay like that. At the minute it's pretty solid, so that looks pretty good. I'll just light it up now so you can see. That's the lights on the front of the Massey. So I just need to wire them up to the Arduino. And that should be it. Job done. As always happens when you try to fix something, you end up breaking twice as many things as you fix. And uh, this time the wires on the motor have broken. So I'm going to have to fix that before we can test out the tractor again. Okay, well here's the Massey wired up now so we can check out the lights. I fixed the motor and all of that so that should be all fine now. And there's uh, the dipped headlights and the full beams so you might have noticed that the they get a little bit brighter a little bit dimmer maybe if I block these ones it will help see see they get a little bit brighter and a little bit dimmer so that's just a little bit of a kind of to simulate a uh, dipped headlights so that's the Massey back up and running if you like that video make sure and hit the like button or if you have any comments or suggestions let me know below the video or head over to the forum and that's pretty much everything, so thanks very much for watching.